Thomas and I gave, uh, I invented sort of a client for this project to give it a personality and identity. A person that helps me kind of focus on what goals it should be. So in this case, it's called port, which the idea is that just as ships come into port to replenish and get supplies, so guests and uh, people going to conventions can come in invigorated, uh, but also relaxed. This is port. As you can see, it uh, has a real strong power element. Uh, there's many things that went into this design. I will basically just run through kind of the ethos of the project uh, and touch a little bit on some of the more technical aspects. OK, so what is port? Well, basically, uh, Port is a premier hotel and innovation center. And this is kind of a spin on the concept of the convention center, where this is more geared towards <coughs> creative uh, companies, you know, entrepreneurs, people seeking out new ideas. So this isn't necessarily maybe your average convention center. Uh, you can it'll perhaps focus more on companies seeking to maybe get away from the hustle and bustle of a bigger city, but also have a place to regroup, think together, and kind of as an implication of that, have the building itself speak to a certain amount of creativity, innovation with technology, some artistic elements, uh, make the spaces such that they speak to that goal of the project itself. So kind of reiterating that dynamic spaces with those goals. And one of those, one of the most dynamic spaces, I believe, is what I call the innovation center. So <clears throat> this is the tower on the left. It comes down and it kind of rests above the lobby. Uh, it's supported by the core in the back and these diagonal columns. They kind of create this atrium space, and we have this really you know, beautiful Norman Foster inspired steel roof that lets in a lot of light, but can also be provide some shade. I've even seen examples of photovoltaic glass and put little, little dots of uh, PV in there so it actually really serves a bit more of a purpose. And then the space on the, on the right is also part of the atrium, but it, in a sense it is its own piece because it's the innovation center itself. So you can enlarge open space for any sort of events on the second or third story here, you have more workshop rooms, that sort of thing. <clears throat> of course, you know, guests um, in the conference are uh, part of a creative company, you don't want to stay in places that maybe reflect that, so our walls, you know, kind of a unique approach to how a ceiling is handled, let it have color, perhaps it's illuminated and it's like a, a really thin stone that for clients that are looking for a little bit more uh, position in the building, it's a beautiful two-story penthouse right under the restaurant, which is on the top floor. Uh, of course, this is a night view of the cities. This is facing uh, this is facing south, so towards um, St. Joseph, not necessarily the river, but it definitely has views of, of the lake. Really, you know, allowing kind of the palette of the building, you know, maybe some reds, maybe some uh, travertine stone, some purple accent lighting. And in addition to this, you know, this is great for people coming to the conference center and the guests, and everything. but it also should serve the community. And you know, there's many ways that it can, it can serve. You know, other people have noted you know, dining parks and things like that, are really looked at how activity, you know, physical activities that you can go to, that you can you know, buy tickets to, things like that, uh, can be a part of the building. So it's not so much just something you drive by and go, oh, it's nice, but you actually can stop in there and do something. In the so three examples that I integrated, of course, were sporting events, dining, 
the top floor, and fun in the snow. So let's start with this. This is the uh, northern end of the building, so the river is over here. This is uh, Main Street, you know, this is the bridge over the river. Create this tennis pavilion, if you will, that is big enough that it can handle uh, amateur tennis matches, perhaps even something larger. And these two nice, uh, big, beautiful courts that have uh, the seating is integrated into the steps, kind of facing in more. Give it a unique material, maybe some sort of red stone or at least like a red colored concrete so it has a bit more of an environment. <coughs> uh, just for reference, this is the pool and this is the patio from the spa. So it also is integrating the activity into the program of the building, not just saying we're going to put the tennis courts in this warehouse over here and everyone's going to go here. Uh, also, at the end of of this atrium cutting between the innovation center and the tower of, from my first photo. At the end of that, you have this space over here, which is this kind of interesting transition space, which can be a volleyball court in the summer, for instance. So when you come in the building, you immediately see this at the end. You can see the activity, you know, families playing, guests having fun, whatever it is. You go outside, then you kind of look down this terrace pavilion and notice more activity. This is also an opportunity where the building itself could be part of the city and say, you know, if the city wanted to host something, great. You know, St. Joseph, uh, <laughs> Wimbledon, small limited version, at Port Hotel. Great branding identity for the port and uh, hotel in addition to that. Uh, on the top floor, you have this opportunity to get amazing views of the lake. Uh, and <clears throat> You know, in the past, I actually searched for a restaurant in St. Joe that was on a really high floor, and there is, is not one at the moment. So, you know, using this opportunity to get views, but also allowed to have its own kind of identity. In this case, it created this glowing panel ceiling uh, that offers like a dim purplish glow, and the columns can be wrapped in, in an illuminated kind of a similar system, perhaps with LEDs lining the edges of the column, and really allow that to have its own personality, but still fit into the ethos of the project of, you know, maybe artistic technology. And of course, the smaller kids, that area with the tennis courts, or sorry, excuse me, with the volleyball, uh, sand volleyball, that obviously can be stripped out, and portable ice rinks are very easy to do. <coughs> So in this case, you know, take out the volleyball courts, and, uh, and in the winter, put this portable ice rink where then families and guests and the community in general can come together and really just enjoy themselves, kind of, in a sense, under the roof of port. And so, you know, again, this atrium space with that steel roof, you know, you have this kind of grand hallway, if you will, where this is at the end. So the minute you walk in the front door, it's like, ah, I know what I want to do. I know what I'm here to do. And really allowing that openness and activity and just the combination all to, to speak together. This is going to be more of a technical. So here you have that grand avenue. This is where the ice rink or volleyball nets would be. This is the innovation center. And in the back here is the spawn for the gym. And as you move up the building, we have quite a few uh, guest rooms. This is a sample of the mechanical system. Uh, there's obviously way more up on the boards outside, but uh, air is prepped from the back and it kind of split into these rooms which have their own smaller reheat systems that can control the climate a bit. Preview of the structure. Uh, I took something that I really wanted, first of all, it to float over the lobby and you know, the diagonals go back here. You know, these diagonals really do enable it to, to do that. And so on the top, or excuse me, in the tower, try to get it as you know, regularized as possible, but then also provide a little bit of interaction with the core of the building and the actual space where the rooms are held. 
else. You have this kind of, it's like a separate grid over here, and the core is separated in a, a 15 degree angle, and it's supported by these, if you can imagine, it's, it's a man, and he has his two arms, and he's holding back the building from turning and from falling over. It's fully engaged, and the shoulders, in this case, are the, are the stairs. So to kind of give it that dynamic, and then also that serves to open up one of the, you can kind of see here, <coughs> open up this hallway so that there's glass on one side, which doesn't occur, uh, doesn't happen basically on this side. So it kind of orients you too once you're inside the single loaded hallway, to kind of know where you are. In this, in this case, it's sort of face the river. And as we move up the building, uh, as you can see, 17, 18, this is the penthouse room. This is the penthouse here in the corner. So it's really nice views of either direction, uh, two bedrooms. And then on this top floor, we have the restaurant, which again takes up most of the floor uh, to really get you know, views of the river, certainly views of the lake, the lounge, and have views of its own. And then to kind of crown the building, have again this uh, illuminated crown that wraps those shoulders, wraps the building itself, and really ends it nicely, both in the day and the night. Thank you for listening. How did the tower go from this to this? What's the consistency of thought there? Well, I would say the consistency is very much in the idea of the program itself. You know, this one was still you know, the, the innovation center you know, from the patterns that were set forth. Obviously a different form entirely. But as you can see from, from this floor plan a little bit, Certain elements didn't remain. You know, the gym is still here. This uh, area of the ice rink slash volleyball courts still remains. The idea of some sort of tennis pavilion had begun to formulate. Obviously, it wasn't as developed as I have it now. And still, the idea of you know, having cafes and things like inside, uh, and even retail, which I didn't touch on here, that really can invite someone into the hotel even if they're not a guest. So, again, program very similar, obviously, to form. What drove the change in form? The structure or other elements? Well, there are numerous things. Uh, one of them, I. <laughs> I, yes, I've gotten very quick. Um, one of the things I had a friend at uh, Gensler who was telling me about these types of exoskeleton uh, forms. The, he was telling me how difficult it was to put any sort of drywall and get that privacy between the rooms because of these kind of triangulated pieces here. So that got me thinking, and so I started thinking of other you know, ways to handle that, you know, whether like reducing them, changing them, balconies, uh, a lot of different options. And honestly, it came down to just one day where I was, you know, I liked the idea of having this building kind of hover in the atrium. I had tried to accomplish that over here, uh, perhaps a better view, you know, where it's kind of hovering over, but I felt that space was too dark, so it's like, all right, just blast through it, and that's kind of how it started, and then the rest of it kind of grew up. I really
really appreciate a night view because in the city setting with a tall building like this especially when there's so much transparency that's really important. Yeah. I mean of course every single light is on the <laughs> wouldn't happen. But but yeah. Uh, and you know I was actually just on kind of a side note, I was actually surprised how tall the uh, the retirement home was on this side, and so I, I felt that it wasn't encroaching on any sort of you know, unspoken rule, uh, but that it could really uh, be allowed to stretch up and really get the most of the beautiful views that uh, the west faces, you know, the sun setting of the lake, and the summer is very beautiful, the winter also. You said you were excited about the winter harvest. Oh, yes. Is there, is there any idea that you might like have to walk me down the slope? Uh, or, for, or is the winter just the, the ice rink? Yeah, I mean, maybe. There is quite a slope on the other side of the tennis courts just because of the way that's formed. I mean, I didn't develop them, but you know, I'm open to ideas. <laughs> I think I enjoy it because, you know, just like seating in Central Park or in Grand Park in Manhattan, is kind of you're surrounded by these buildings and it's it's a little bit more dynamic than the St. Joseph's Ice Skating Rink at the moment, which is you know has roof and it's it. And this is you know you're skating, you know the kids are outside, and the cafeteria is right on the other side of this glass, and so the parents can be there, and you know the guy up in his room can look down there and the person getting their nails done over here. So, so it's like really wrapping it all together. Or like I said, you know, we're not sticking stuff out in the, in the parking lot. It's all within the building. Uh, you know, and honestly, part of the reason to have a tower wasn't just to have a tall. It was with the amount of program that we had to really to be able to use a lot of the space uh, on the ground floor. I needed to obviously reduce it. It's a really smart thing to focus on the kind of activity that it generates more than the building. I don't know if you're familiar with the Radisson Council, but just in the time I've uh, observed it, I think it's been renovated maybe three times. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the, the newness of it or the novelty just wears off, and, and there's nothing else. I mean, it's a high end hotel, but they have to keep doing that. So and be associated with the activities there is a pretty smart thing. I agree. All right, any final comments? Before we wrap it up for lunch? Everybody wants lunch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.